Welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today I'm going to show you how to do a voltage drop test on the alternator on your vehicle. So let's go ahead and get started. Now voltage drop can lead to various issues with your vehicle, including um, failed battery because of overcharging or undercharging. It can lead to a misdiagnosis of the alternator. Um, as far as thinking that the alternator is the issue and replacing it when that might not be the case. It can also lead to other electrical problems in your vehicle. So it's important to know how to test it so you can diagnose properly and see where the issue is. So I have multiple vehicles here. We have three of them that we're going to look at. And we're going to run this test and I'm going to show you as far as where you're going to test it and how you're going to test it. So let's head over to one of the vehicles. We'll get it started and we'll start the testing process. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle. We're going to take the RPMs up to around 2,000 RPMs. Then we're going to put a full load on. We're going to turn the headlights on, windshield wipers on, radio on, any kind of thing that's going to draw on the electrical system. Then we're going to head back under the hood and then start the testing process. When doing this test, you want to make sure that you have your vehicle in park and definitely have your emergency brake pulled all the way up. If you're dealing with a manual transmission, you want to make sure you put it in neutral. Pull your emergency brake all the way up before you start this. Turn the radio on. We're going to turn the AC on. We'll put that on as well. We're also going to turn on our headlights. Get a full draw. And some people even recommend turning on the wipers. And then now we're going to get our RPMs up. We're going to start by testing the alternator. We're going to take our multimeter, put it on DC volts 20. Set it here so you can see it. We're going to take our, our positive lead and touch it on the post of the alternator. And then we're going to ground it. So we're going to ground it right here. And you can see we're getting 14 point, around 14.8 volts off the alternator. Next, we're going to test the battery. We'll take our multimeter here. And we're looking for it to be within about 0.5 volts. So we were at 14.8 on the alternator. Let's test the battery. We're at about 14.6. Uh, 14.6, we jumped up to 14.7. So if you want it between point, no less than 0.5, so we're good. All right, so everything is looking good so far. If your alternator would have been giving voltage around like 12.5, 12.6 or lower, then you have an issue with the alternator because the alternator should always be running around a 13.6 or higher, around, around maybe to the... 14.8, 14.9, like we saw. If you're getting over 15 volts, you got to be careful because that could be overcharging it. As we saw also with the battery, that's getting a good voltage as well from it because the alternator is charging the battery right here on this post. So that all looks good. Now we're going to check another test. So let's head over here. Next, we're going to be checking the positive circuit voltage drop. And we're going to do that. We have our multimeter here. You can see it. We're going to take our black lead from our multimeter, put it on the positive battery terminal, and then the red lead is going to go on to the post of the alternator. And you want it to be between 0.03 and 0.40. That's the safe range. If you're below the 0.03 or above the 0.4, then you have an issue. So we're going to put it here on the post. We're going to put it here on the positive battery terminal. As you can see, we are at... Whoop, hold on. Let me get a better connection here. You can see we're at 0.13, so we are good with that because we're between the 0.03 and 0.4 range. Let's do the next one. Next, we're going to check the negative uh, circuit voltage drop. And by doing that, we are going to put the black lead on the housing of the alternator and the red lead on the negative battery terminal. So let's go ahead and make sure you get a good connection. If you have an older alternator, you might want to scratch it so that way you can get a good connection, but we have it here. Put it here. And you can see we're at 0.06. So we're between that 0.03 and 0.40 range. So this is good. 
All right, so we checked the positive circuit voltage drop and the negative circuit voltage drop. Both of them checked out fine on this vehicle, so this one's good. Let's head over to another car. I'm going to show you on a couple other ones as well before we wrap it up. This one's a little trickier. There's our positive post coming off the alternators tucked back here. Definitely be careful. As you can see, you've got fans and belts and stuff. You want to be careful. And then we have our battery here on this. This is an old Jeep 2J. But let's go ahead and connect it. And uh, we're going to test this one as well. And you can see this alternator, we're running at about 14.7, so that's good. Let's check the battery. Fourteen point five. So we're only point two away, so as long as you're within that point five range, you're good. So now let's check the um, the positive circuit. And remember how we did that. We're going to go ahead and connect our black lead to the positive on the battery and our red to the alternator. This one's a little tricky to get to. So we're at 0.06. So that's good. So now we're going to test it by connecting our negative lead to the casing of the alternator and our positive, or, or our red, to the negative on the battery. Now this alternator is pretty old, so I'm going to scratch it up a little bit to get a good connection on it. And we're at 0.10, so this one's good as well. And depending on your vehicle, this one here, it's all tucked in here. On the first one that we did, it was a Kia. Little Kia, we're going to be headed over to a GM. The alternator is right on top, it makes it a lot easier. Some cars that I have, they're underneath, it's problematic, it's a little trickier, but hopefully, whatever car you're working on, it's an easy one to get to. Let's head over here. Now, this vehicle here, alternator is right on top again, so that's easy. You got the battery right here, the alternator, it makes it easy to get to everything. I'm going to fire it up, we'll take it up to 2000 RPMs, put the load on, and then we'll start the testing process. on the AC. We'll turn on our rear windshield wipers and we'll turn on these as well. And the headlights on this vehicle are automatically on. All right, we're going to start with the alternator as we already showed. 20 volts DC is what you want. Put this here so you can, well, if you can see it here. But we're going to take we're going to go ahead and connect to the uh, the positive on the alternator and then we're going to ground it. You can see here we are about at 14.8 so that's good for the alternator. Our alternator is working great. Let's check the battery. side mount batteries.
All right, so we are at 14.7. So this is really good. Battery and alternator are looking great. So let's check the, uh, the positive circuit voltage drop. So we're going to connect onto the post of the alternator and then take our black lead and connect to a positive on the battery. And we are at 0 0.15, 0 0.16. Either way, we're above the 0 0.03 and below the 0 0.4, so that's good. Let's check the negative circuit voltage drop. So for that, we are going to take the red lead, put it on the negative battery terminal, as we showed already, and then we're going to ground it here on the alternator casing itself. We are point, point oh 0.05, so we're above the 0 0.03, and obviously below the 0 0.4, so this is good. All right, so as we saw, all the vehicles that we tested all checked out fine. Just to recap real quick, we tested the alternator under load at, three, at uh, 2,000 RPMs, checked the battery under load. Then we did the positive circuit voltage drop and then the negative circuit voltage drop. As mentioned at the beginning, um, when you do your alternator and battery test, you want them to be above the 13, probably 13.5, 13.6, but you don't want it over 14 volts, so otherwise you're overcharging. So that's what you want to do for the battery and the alternator. And then for the um, positive and negative circuit voltage drop, you want them to be between 0.03 and 0 0.40 is the safe zone. If you're higher or lower, then there's a problem. And as we mentioned already, if you've got an issue with the voltage drop, you can have an overcharge or undercharge. It can cause problems, cause your battery to fail. You can misdiagnose your alternator. You can have other electrical issues as well. So that wraps up this video on how to do a uh, voltage drop test on your alternator on your vehicle. I hope that this video was uh, informative for you. I hope it helped you out. Please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. If you want to see any other videos I've done pertaining to battery and alternators, testing and things like that, I'll have those links down in the description. You can check those out. And as always, I appreciate all the support. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time.